Hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today is a special day. We are looking at the first appearance of Tom Richmond. Um, before we get into all of that, remember please hit like, hit subscribe, hit share. My last two videos, like the regular reviews that I released Saturday, blew up. Uh, I had over 100 and then over 200 views. Um, respectfully on the previous two videos, which is somewhat uh, astonishing to me that so many people clicked on my video. Um, so if you're a new viewer, if you've never seen the channel, if you're one of those 200 something people that watched it for the very first time, please hit subscribe. Um, please share this out. I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, my goal for 200 uh, subscribers by Christmas it is within the realm of possibility, which feels good. It did not feel within the realm of possibility when I first set that goal for myself. So um, one thing I want to say is, if you are not familiar with uh, the idea of first appearances, um, it is where I pick an artist or a writer. Uh, I think almost all have been uh, artists so far. I pick a, an artist and I look at their very first appearance in Mad Magazine, some of their appearances uh, in the middle, and then I look at their final appearances. And um, today we're doing Tom Richmond. And you might think, well, how could he have a final appearance? He's a, he's a strapping young man. He has years ahead of him uh, of, of caricatures and illustration and cartooning. Yes, he does. But does mad. <laughs> um, he... Uh, Tom Richmond has been working at Mad Magazine since November 2000. That was the first published issue that he had work in. Um, and he's been in, I think, every single issue since. Going all the way up to issue 15, where uh, he got to do the farewell to um, Mort Drucker. And we'll get to that. Um, but let's look as the title would imply, at the first appearance of Tom Richmond. I'm going to get a sip of water. Pardon me. Um, so, this is MAD issue number 399. Like I said, it came out in November 2000. Um, that's the cover date. Obviously, they get released before that, so this probably came out October or something. Um, and in this, this brings me back. We carve up X-Men and MTV's Total Request Live, plus high-tech gadgets, Dennis Miller, and Cyber Geeks. Can you think of, like, uh, a better time capsule of the year 2000? We got first time Wolverine. You know, we get um, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine for the very first time. We got, um, what was that dude's name that was Total Request Live? I can't believe I'm forgetting his name because he was like the most famous person in the world for high school <laughs> students at that time. Um, and gosh, I'm going to get stuck. I'm trying to remember that. And then look at Dennis Miller. I think the year 2000 was probably the last time Dennis Miller was relevant. Sorry, Dennis Miller. No, uh, I don't mean to throw so much shade to you. Um, unlike normal episodes of flipping through, we don't flip through the whole episode. We go right to um, what we want to talk about. And so here we go. His very first appearance in Mad Magazine. Tom Richmond is doing the art for writer Dick DiBartolo, which to me, um, that's a big deal. I, I, I feel that that would be a really big deal. Um, I was speaking with, uh, in one of my previous interviews, um, Dalton Vaughn. He got to work with Dick DiBartolo, and that was really recently that he did that, and it was interesting to talk to um, talk to Dalton Vaughn because so much of the image has been written by Dick uh, already. So I'm I'm curious in this: what did Tom Richmond get to do himself? What chicken fat did he get to add into this? Because I imagine things like the Oh, I, maybe I should read the title. Um, but things like this device, I have a feeling that Dick 
described that fairly well. Gadgets really make home theater... What? Gadgets to really make home theater like going to the movies. That's, that's like kind of a clunky title. Um, who am I to judge? Jeez Louise, I'm again on YouTube. I'm not Dick DiBartolo. Um, so this is the home theater sized food smell generator. People don't just eat popcorn at the movies anymore. They bring in their own food, all kinds of food to make your home reviewing viewing experience more realistic. The food smell generator delivers random food smells like hot oily french fries, Chinese takeout, and of course, pizza with smelly anchovies. I feel like this is, uh, you know, Dick DiBartolo lived and worked in New York City, uh, I believe most, if not all of his life. I feel like this is a, like more of a New York City thing. Uh, growing up in Minnesota, I do not know, I have zero memories of people bringing in like outside food. I mean, aside from candy, right? Like you, you're a kid and you sneak in candy. You're in high school, you might sneak in a bottle of wine or something. I don't know. But not, not like full meals from other places. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, that's poor taste. You, can't, you cannot and should not bring in whole meals. But this is, uh, I really like his style. Um, there are certain aspects of it, um, like these main faces where it's not as it you know it's not as polished as he is now i mean now it's um it's so much sharper is his style i don't know if it's i mean he's been doing it for significantly longer at this point in time than he was at this point in time so there is that but just in general, he's, his style seems looser um, in things like this dude with his like face stuck to the carpet. Um, there are, like, I sort of, the way this face is drawn, it almost reminds me of Jack Davis. The way he would, like, I mean, it's an eyeball. It's a round thing, right? So it's hard to say, like, well, that's a Jack Davis eyeball. But there's uh, something about this face it just reminds me of him. Um, and I guess kind of like this body too, these sort of like rounded features. And I don't know, it's lovely. Like this looks like Jack Davis. This looks like a more traditional caricature. Um, of course, I mean, it's like, it's hard to look at any caricature and not also think of Mort Drucker. Um, I'm trying to not make that comparison because I think that that's, it's so easy to do. Um, but there are significant differences in caricature artists. I mean, if, um, if you've watched my videos, like when they had multiple, um, parodies of television shows or, uh, movies in Mad Magazine, they had multiple artists doing them. And Angelo Torres has a very different style than Mort Drucker. They're both professional illustrator caricature artists. So then there's this schlub. I don't know. Um, I like it. I like this. Max Corn for Prez. Look at this chicken fat. Look at this. I love this. As a Minnesota boy. Um, we got the Minnesota Twins cap right there in the bucket. I love that. So, I mean, that's something, obviously, that um, Tom Richmond is probably... Um, allowed to do not allowed to do but that was his choice that was his artistic choice the other thing that i really love about this illustration is that the, like the widescreen angle um and it's like there's so much text that it's kind of hard to appreciate but it's like this very extreme angle and it's just the perspective on all of it is just awesome um i was just reading through a comic book and you know, it was more simple illustrations and the, they couldn't even get the perspective on that. Um, whereas this having the wide angle and the perspective, like it just almost every line of it makes sense. So like even at this point, I don't know how old he was back in 2000, but he was m more than competent as, as an illustrator. I think that's safe to say. Um, so anyway... Oh, look at 
Peter Cooper. Is that, is that how you spell that dude's name? Oh, Dennis. Anyway, uh, maybe this would be a good one to flip through. I don't know. Um, so I want to, I sort of picked one randomly. It wasn't totally random. This was uh, sort of in the middle. This is 13 years in. Um, came out 2013 in February. So it's the 20 dumbest people, events, and things of 2012. Wonderful Lance Armstrong thing. The more, you know, I remember learning about this a little bit, and I kind of feel bad for Lance Armstrong. Because it's like, I, I, it was sort of a situation where, like, everybody was doing it. And it was just him that got, that got in trouble for it. Or whose reputation was really destroyed for it. At least from what I read, that's what it seems like. So here we go. Uh, 13 years in at Mad Magazine. Um, however many issues. What is this? This is like 519. That was 399. So over 100 issues. Um, and you get it. You get that. Um, the Tom Richmond look. I'm trying to make it so I don't get as much glare. I love newsprint for that. <laughs> like looking at the older newsprint issues, it's so much better because you don't have the glossy pages shining back at you. Um, but it's, I guess like this is where, this is kind of what I was talking about with the things aren't as loose. It's, I mean, a more confident hand i mean and you know it's uh yeah i i when i do these i talk like i'm an expert in art but i'm obviously not if you, <laughs> if you watch my videos this is just a guy do making observations about what he sees and trying to describe it but like when i look at oh look at that he traced it that's what he did on this. He took out his very first appearance and he traced it. But like when I look at this, it just seems like, and maybe, I don't know if it is the material, but it's just, this is, there's so many more details. I think it's maybe the reason that these two are so much more detailed is that you're working off of um, a reference, right? Like this is just some lady. This is some lady he's invented. This is, I don't know, that actress that's in all of uh, uh, what's his face's movies. Um, you know, this is Morgan Freeman. This is just some guy. But I think that, like, that the confidence of the artist and the experience lead to these more detailed drawings and certainly more expressive drawings. I mean, this one is just like, this is incredibly expressive. This is about as expressive as she always is in movies. Like she just looks at the screen like, I don't know, she's bored and then she talks in some accent. Um, like, oh no, Batman, I do not know what to do. Is she Spanish or French? I don't know. But either way, I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of her. Um, and it's like this face right here of Michael Caine, just beautiful. That is beautiful. Now there was, um, with this, unlike my regular flipping through issues, I do kind of flip through these ahead of time. And there is evidence here of it, but I do want to show some more pages of this. Um, you know, I'll look at the, the Mad Zeppelin going through. Just uh, some beautiful things. There's Big Bird, lovely little you know, pieces of chicken fat sprinkled here and there. Um, but one thing that I really like is, and this is where I'm going to compare him again to another artist. Um, like right in here, we see, I see, um, evidence of Jack Davis again. Um, Jack Davis would do this really cool thing with his illustrations where he would have... Um, well, the illustrations and the coloring. Does, does Richmond color his own stuff? There's no colorist credited here. I'm, I wonder if he does. Um, but anyway, like uh, things in the background and foreground would be kind of washed. Um, you know, at the time it was just gray. It was like a gray wash. 
um, but now this is in blue. So one, it separates the foreground from the background and it helps you focus on that while giving you some things to look at in here. But what Jack Davis did really well and what Tom Richmond does really well is making this scene, background, foreground, whatever it is, something worth looking at. Um, it's not just because these people are talking. There are people in the background that don't need to be as detailed as they are. And yet, he's done that. And that was something that Jack Davis did. And I really, really loved that Jack Davis did it. And so you can see that here. You can see that also. Oh, look at Here's uh, the guy, the Mad Money guy from the TV. I don't know what show that is, though. Oop, I'm going to zoom out. And I might go back to that front page because there's a, a really excellent example of it. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to that front page. Because you can see, you know, when I'm zoomed out, you're seeing everything that the reader sees normally when they, they open up this book. But then those kids that are like me when I was reading this, you zoom in and you start seeing all of this awesome detail in the background. See, all of these people look different. It's not just uh, empty faces to people, uh, different genders and races and uh, just everything. Look at it. There's a baldy. He drew a baldy. He draws lovely locks. It is, um, I mean, maybe artists have like this sort of glossary of people in their mind, but regardless, it's extra work to do all of that. And he does it. Oh, uh, we are the 99%. We are the 47%. I am the one. The one? Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on to his penultimate appearance in Mad Magazine. So, um, this is in issue number 14, a uh, special Al Jaffe issue. Um, this is... Uh, Cover by Sam Viviano. You know, just if you are unaware, Sam Viviano, another character artist and another person who has such a distinct style, um, such a beautiful style too. Uh, but anyway, so this is his um, second to last appearance. And the reason is, the reason I chose this to show this as well, because this is... Um, his final appearance where he's doing a regular feature, um, something that was written and, um, it, well, I guess it would be a regular feature. So this is uh, Cheat Your Way to Olympic Gold. So this is by Desmond Devlin uh, and Tom Richmond. Desmond Devlin, uh, of course, being, um, I think he wrote that other one he, was, he did. No, he didn't. Never mind. That was, um, oh. I should say, I shouldn't just brush that off because that, that man, it was Arnie Kogan. That's who it was. Um, but anyway, Desmond Devlin and Tom Richmond worked a lot together and they're continuing to work together on a Indiegogo campaign called Claptrap, which sounds dirty, but it's not. I asked my wife what it meant and she said, I don't know, sounds dirty. And I said, I know, I'm going to look it up. That don't do it on your work account. And I said, okay, I won't. Anyway, um, so this is what I love about this, uh, absolutely love about this, is that it's different than what he, I think, is best known for. He's best known for the movie spoofs, and he did a lot of stuff like this. These um, sort of, I guess, regular features. I don't know what to call this. I don't know the name for it, but um, they're wonderful. And this reminds me of one of my favorite types of articles, which were the ones that Al Jaffe would write and draw, which were like ways to quit smoking or automobile safety things, where it were, there were these like bizarre contraptions, which invariably would go very wrong. Um, so, you know, this is a mix between, you know, Al Jaffe wrote and drew those, and this is a, an artist-writer team when in Devlin and 
um, Richmond. But it still captures that. It captures the essence and the fun of those inventions. Um, and you, like, it, it, these are mundane, right? It's like uh, technical drawings aren't silly and fun, but they are when a good artist is drawing them. And then, you know, it's uh, so the woman's floor exercises and I don't know, like some special special thing. Oh, they're chameleon. I get it now. So they're chameleon. So when you step out, you can't tell. Um, it is, uh, it's awesome. Like all this is anything for some reason, anything involving a spring, in the drawing, uh, it's perfect. I love it. I'm, I'm drawn to anything that has a spring drawn into it. But yeah, this is, um, I just like that um, he's able to work in that sort of like be those beautiful splash pages and then in a strip format and he's able to switch between them so masterfully. Um, it's pretty fantastic. And again, look at that crowd illustration. I'm going to zoom in on this. It's, uh, it's great. If you want, listen, artists, if you want to impress me, draw a crowd of people. Okay, that's how you impress me. And there's Bert and Ernie. Boom, right there. That's delightful. Just little things like that. How do you get a whole, how do you get a crowd of people to all look like they're looking at, in the same, at the same thing? Like, d try doing that. Try, they, you can see, you can follow all of their eyes and they're all looking at her. That's amazing. Am I too easily impressed? I don't know. Oopsies. So um, that is, that's it. That's uh, his penultimate appearance. And now we can move on to his final appearance, which uh, is one uh, from the, if you haven't been reading Modern Mad Magazines, um, one of the things that they brought in with the reboot, uh, Bill Morrison, I think, brought this in. I mean, he was the, the man in charge, was the Weisenheim Museum. And they would get artists and creators to um, just write about how Mad Magazine influenced them. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, you know, sometimes it's like, well, who the hell is this person? Not like, who are they writing about? Like, I know who Basil Wolverton is. Who the hell is this person writing about Basil Wolverton? Like, why do I care what they think? Um, so that would be like, you know, sometimes that was a little confusing as to why they, how they picked the person that they, they picked. Um, and so I kind of feel like reading this aloud. Um, and as I read aloud, just drink in this beautiful illustration and look at all of the amazing details that Tom Richmond has put into this. It's difficult to adequately describe the influence Mort Drucker has had on multiple generations of cartoonists, and especially caricaturists. Almost any comic book artist will light up at the mention of his name and praise his work. He was one of the rarest of talents, a cartoonist's cartoonist. It was a lucky day for planet Earth when Mort walked into Bill Gaines' mad office in October of 1956 looking for a job. Legend has it, Gaines and the staff were listening to a Brooklyn Dodgers game, and Gaines told Mar Mort, the Dodgers win will give you an assignment. They won. Bill later admitted Mort was going to get an assignment regardless, only the first of many in a legendary career. Mort's talent for caricature, cinematic storytelling, and humor added the perfect visual ingredient to Mad's pop culture satire recipe, while the magazine had published several movie and TV parodies before Mort joined the usual gang of idiots, it was his unique skill set that turned them into a beloved mad staple. It was serendipity at its finest. The perfect artist meets the perfect outlet. Brilliance was born. Mort illustrated over 300 parodies for Mad. Being drawn into one of his pieces became a badge of honor for those celebrities lucky enough find their way into his artwork. 
His undeniable mastery of the form came to define an entire genre. They say you should never meet your heroes, but anyone who ever met Mort would beg to differ. He was as humble and friendly as he was talented. He was a great mentor to me personally and a support of my, supporter of my work for over 20 years. Count me one of the many who holds Mort's art, his achievements, and the man himself in awe. Mort Drucker, 20, 1929 to 2020. Um, I thought I, I found that a very sweet um, eulogy for for Mort and um, Tom Richmond is right like he he owned the movie parodies uh, he did such a fantastic job uh, and for me he was the guy that stood out as the caricature artist I knew Mort Drucker I did not know um, you know, uh, well, now this is embarrassing. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Angelo Torres. That's a name that I, I, I learned later. I didn't really understand that he was a separate artist. Um, Mort was a force. And I think to Tom Richmond's credit, he took over that role. And uh, I think he did a damn good job filling those shoes. So um, with that, Thank you so much for watching. This has been Flipping Through, and this has been First Appearances. Listen, also, this is the worst goddamn mad cover I've ever seen. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. Remember, hit like, subscribe, and share out this video. If you have any ideas for a future video, if you have any issues that you would like to see me flip through, let me know in the comments. Thanks again. Toodaloo.